Hey, I'm CJ Maurer with The Gist, and I am willing to bet that you would love to have more insights about your customer journey, right? How people find you, how they progress through the journey from subscriber to lead to customer and whatever. And I also am willing to bet that you wish your CRM would make these updates more automatically and be more self-regulating and less reliant on a bunch of manual updates that sometimes happen and sometimes don't. If this sounds like you, I am going to teach you how to use life cycle stages and relationship-driven design to build a fully automated, self-regulating CRM that helps you track your customer journey from start to finish. So let's dive in. So first, what you're gonna see here is a super simple report this is in a dev account, so um, this is all dummy data, so there's not actually people inside this account every single day. Um, but here is the simplest of simple reports that you're going to want, which is all of your companies by life cycle stage, and you may wanna do the same thing for contacts. Now, when you have this, what do you want to have happen? One, you want to clearly define the stages, right? Old school HubSpot users will remember that for the longest time, the lifecycle stage property could not be edited. There were preset values and you could not add them, edit them, change them, or whatever. But in late 2022, I believe it was, like October, November 2022, HubSpot allowed you to update them. And this was a huge game changer because it was also close to the same time when they introduced marketing contacts. So between that and workflows, now all of a sudden we have a ton of options to automatically set and update lifecycle stages when things happen or when things don't happen based on a variety of triggers. I wanna talk through what it really requires to make this happen. Now the first thing that needs to happen needs to happen before you touch anything in HubSpot. First, you actually need to define what you want your life cycle stages to be. And we've seen some very customized use cases. If you look at the, all of the stages in this demo portal, it's pretty similar to what you have been used to, right? Subscriber, lead, uh, we use qualified prospect instead of opportunity or SQL. Uh, client instead of customer, but then we also have former client, we have employee, we have partner, and we have archived. Archived is a hugely important thing that we'll talk about in a second, but really what you wanna do is think about what are the different ways we can characterize how our business relates with and to other people, and then document those in stages and define what they mean. For example, we have defined subscriber as any contact or company, right, with contacts that converts through the website on some type of top funnel offer, whether it's a content offer or a newsletter subscription, and doesn't have any otherwise does not have any relationship with the business. They're not being worked by a sales rep, they're not a customer, they don't, they're not associated with a deal, it's the only way we know them, right? So what we have decided is, okay, we're gonna mark these people as, as subscribers, we're gonna nurture them, and then we're going to track their engagement through a lead score, and then if and when they cross a threshold, we're gonna automatically assign them to the sales team and, and encourage, give them a task to follow up and update them to lead, right? So all of this happens automatically. Nobody ever has to set that contact or company a subscriber or update that to lead. Lead, pretty self-explanatory. Those are all of the contacts and companies that the sales team is actively trying to prospect. I'll skip partner for a second. Qualified prospect is like a lead, but deeper. It's anybody that's associated with an open deal. So leads are all the people that are in your, the name of a sales rep and they're calling on them. Once that rep takes a meeting or, or engages willingly in the sales process, explores a quote, then a deal is created, they become a qualified prospect. When that deal moves to close one, they're a client. When that client terms with us, it's a former client. If the contact has uh, our domain on an email address, we have them as an employee. Why? Uh, because you want to easily put all of your, make sure your employees are getting your communication. Uh, so you can create a simple workflow to make sure that all of your employees are added to the CRM and they don't ne necessarily need to get emails and other things that are meant for clients or prospects or whatever. Partners are people that uh, exist to refer us business, 
but would not or ever be a client, right? Because you have current clients and that, that could refer you business and they are evangelists. We do that in a different way. But then you have other people that really are just partners of the business. They could be vendors, they could be suppliers, referral partners. There are other people that the only really way they relate to your business is not by paying you money, but is, is by supporting your business in other ways. So this is how we've done it here. You need to find your own stages. The one thing that I'm going to supremely recommend is that you have some type of archive stage archived, downgraded, you can call it whatever you want, but the premise is this. Whenever somebody is in your CRM and uh, is not an existing client and is not being worked by a sales rep and is not opening your emails or visiting your website or engaging with your business in any way or bringing any meaningful value to your business or anybody in it, you should not be wasting resources counting them as a marketing contact, sending them marketing emails, or having them clog up your reports. It doesn't mean they need to be deleted, it just means they need to be isolated away from the rest of the contacts and companies in your CRM that are actually meaningful. What we would recommend is creating a workflow that finds the triggering moment when all of these things happen, right? Not associated with deal. All of this data that I described lives in the CRM. And when that happens, clear the contact and company owner, update the lifecycle stage to archived, and set them as a non-marketing contact. Now you have isolated them away so that you're, they're not counting towards your marketing contact here. They are not being sent emails that they don't need to be sent, and they're not counting toward or clogging up any reports, but they still live in the CRM. So if a new rep gets hired two years later and wants to search, oh my gosh, there's that company. Oh, I see there was a little bit of activity like seven years ago. Okay, I'm gonna put them in my name and then turn them to a lead and rework them. It's great. I know I just talked about a lot of different things and I wanna show you a couple more things part of this video, but it's actually kind of emblematic of this process. If you are going to figure out the best way to manage life cycle stages and have a self-regulating CRM, it needs to start with strategy and planning because everybody in the company needs to agree when things happen or don't happen because this impacts a lot of different people across various teams and functions. But if I were to recap and summarize what is truly important, it is one, to define and create your stages. Number two, use some of the default settings that are available to you in HubSpot, like sync your life cycle stages. Most companies wanna sync the life cycle stage between a contact and a company, so when a company's changes, subsequently change the life cycle stage of the contacts associated with it. Saves you workflows, saves you time. You may want to create a default life cycle stage when one's created. You know, when a deal is created, boom, qualified prospect, that's easy. When a deal is closed, one, client, right? When a lead is associated, lead, right? You are just like streamlining this to reduce manual data entry and sweat equity in your workflows tool. Now, speaking of your workflows tool, this is important. You can see in this demo portal and a lot of our actual portals that I won't show you, we have a whole folder of workflows for lifecycle stage management. And you can see like there's everything from set employees. So whenever a contact is added in the CRM and has an email address with our domain name, right? If it's at the just inbound.com, boom, they're being set as an employee. That way I can put them on a list and they can get whatever emails or whatever that they need to receive. So this is a simple one right here. Setting marketing contacts is really important right? Because one of the things you need to determine, not only the life cycle stage, but does the change of the life cycle stage indicate that somebody should be a marketing contact or not? If somebody is a subscriber, an employee, or a client, they should absolutely be a marketing contact. Conversely, if somebody is archived, they should absolutely not be, right? Leads and qualified prospects, it depends right? They shouldn't necessarily be or not be a marketing contact because if they are a lead or qualified prospect, um, they normally don't need to be a marketing contact 
until they become a customer. That's when you want to start sending them marketing emails. But if they were to subscribe to your newsletter uh, or download a content offer in the middle of the sales process, then they should be a marketing contact, which should be configured in a separate workflow triggered by a form submission. So there are some stages where you don't want to set it one way or another because you should allow other factors to influence whether there is a marketing contact. The archive is very, very important. You can see we've built this workflow that has a variety of factors where, hey, they haven't been contacted for a year, there's no activity, there's no engagement for a year, they haven't been on the website for at least six months, so on and so forth. In that instance, we're going to you know, clear all of this, set them to archived, and then once they're archived, we'll set them as non-marketing contacts, clear the contact owner. It basically requires a lot of planning and intention, but then once you have accomplished that, there's a bunch of simple workflows that you wanna put in place to update, to set or update the lifecycle stage, one step after another, to uh, set or update the marketing contact status, one step after another. You may also want to stamp date properties, became a blank date which now HubSpot settings are doing for you depending on your subscription automatically, but it sometimes doesn't hurt to have uh, workflows where you're automatically uh, setting those dates so you can actually analyze the customer journey uh, progression, calculated properties, time between, average time between lead and qualified prospect, qualified prospect and customer. Ultimately though, what we're coming back to is a self regulating CRM. We all know that the biggest reason why we have frustration with CRM is the data is either inaccurate or incomplete. And there is literally nothing more important than having complete data on our relationships. It's in the name, literally, CRM, Customer Relationship Management, right? There is, there is no single load-bearing wall inside the CRM that fulfills the purpose of its actual name than tracking what relationship your business has with the people that it is working with or trying to influence. So by mapping out your life cycle stages, by building workflows to automatically set them and update them, by closing the loop with archives and clearing out marketing contact statuses, you can have that self-regulating CRM that is gonna work the way you want. Now. I could honestly talk for two hours about this, but I don't think anybody's gonna pay attention for that long. So if you're interested in diving deeper, uh, first, like this video and subscribe to our channel if you found it helpful. But then, either leave a comment here or click a link to our website and, and get in touch with us. If you have any suggestions or follow-up questions or you wanna see more details about this concept in action. Thanks for following along. We absolutely love doing this. Once again, I'm CJ Maurer with The Gist, and we will talk to you soon.